What's happening fishing friends? Devin from Debo's Fishing here and today we're going over lure hacks, modification, things that will help make your life easier when you're out on the water. So listen, no time to waste. Enough yapping, let's get to modding. Okay, we gotta start out with the first lure hack that I ever learned and that's with the toothpick. My old man showed me this. We gotta give credit where credit's due. Thanks pops. You're out on the water, you've got your Texas rig here, it's sliding around, you uh, get to a bunch of brush and you think, well, I need to peg this baby, but you're out of uh, bobber stops. Never fear, the old toothpick is here. You just stick that down in there. You want to be careful not to push super, super hard because especially with fluorocarbon and nylon, you could damage the line a little bit, but you can see there, that's already not moving. Push that down in there like so. Take your scissors or clippers, cut the end of that off, and there you go. You now have a, a Texas rig weight that will no longer move on you. Now you're probably thinking, Debo, that's the easiest hack in the book. We already knew that. Well, let's let's move on. The second hack I've got for you is with these. These are the VMC crossover rings. They have special pliers for these. You don't need them, but you can buy them because it's got a little storage deal in the handle. It's kind of nice. These have essentially taken place of O-rings for me most of the time. They also come in different sizes. That's why I'm showing this one here. It's a four millimeter. This is what it looks like here, this little tiny tube, nothing too special, right? We can see here it's got a spot to rig your hook, so if you want to Nico rig it, you can do that, or if you want to wacky rig it, you can do that. It's got two different little holes already kind of preset there for you for the hook. Now that's not the coolest part. The coolest thing is if you take this, and these are just regular pliers, this is what I mean, you don't need anything super special. Open that up there with the pliers, put the soft plastic lure that you're using in there like that. Pull it off there and there you go. Now you're thinking, Debo, what, what in the heck are you doing with something like this? Well, when you're putting a lure on a jig, so let's pretend this is a swim jig that's got a skirt and everything on it. I've got a naked one here that I made just to make it easier to show you. This is actually nice because it's got really large soft plastic keeper. A lot of the jigs, uh, instead of having two like this, they'll just have one down on the bottom, right? What happens is after that soft plastic wears out a little bit, doesn't want to hold it on there anymore. Well, with this, you can see how hard it is to get it up over that like so. You can barely tell here, but that's the, the lead piece right there sticking into my finger. That's the lead that would normally hold my soft plastic. But you take one of these little VMC deals and put that on there, this thing is not coming off. It's gonna rip here before it pulls off this. So if you're fishing around a bunch of grass or anything that keeps pulling, or if you're skipping, another great thing, um, if you're skipping the bait or around grass, anything that just keeps pulling your plastic off, put this baby up here toward the head of it in front of the lead keeper like that, and that baby is not coming off. Okay, tip number three is for you wacky rig lovers, or this would actually work for a Nico rig as well, but let's say you run out of those O-rings, something like this, or these crossover rings, you don't have anything, where there's a couple things you can keep with you, and some people even like more. This is one, I forget who told me this one, somebody already showed it on, I think it might have been Fluke Master, um, but somebody showed me it and I thought, oh, you know what, that's kind of neat. Now you'd have to do this ahead of time because you need heat, unless you have like a, I don't know, a lighter or something on the boat, but be careful. This is quarter inch shrink tubing. It goes uh, three to one shrinkage. Cut just a little tiny piece off and you can run this up the middle of your Senko. This is the largest I had. Maybe you'd want to go one size bigger, but you can run this up your Senko, use a little heat gun on it or a hairdryer and it shrinks it down to it. And it kind of makes it this like tough rubbery deal. You can put your uh, hook through that and you've got a wacky rig. Now let's say you didn't have that, something that probably everybody has. And I wouldn't recommend these gargantuan ones. I would recommend like the little tiny ones. You can usually get these super cheap on Amazon, but a zip tie. Let's say you run out of wacky rings, you don't have anything else on you. Zip tie that down there, cut it off, and you've got a wacky rig. Now, I don't like the square thing that sticks out here. This is something I saw on Instagram a long time ago. With the real tiny, uh, you know, low profile ones, this would definitely work more, but that big thing sticking off there, I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of it. But in a pinch, let's just say you needed it. I mean, you could use a, a zip tie wacky rig. Next, we've got something that I have used the heck out of, mend it. Let's say uh, you were cutting your wacky rig off and it just happened to be the last wacky rig because you were using a zip tie thing and you cut it in half like I just did. Well, don't worry. This is great for repairing plastics that, you know, get tore up like this or if you're fishing a Texas rig and you don't have many left, you need to keep that, you know, few around. You can repair them where they tear off up at the top. Put some of this on here. I'm going to stick it together just like that. I'm going to leave this to the side and I'll show you this here in just a little bit. The other thing that we've used this for, and this was a trick that I got from my buddy Rand Dizzle, is he uses Mendit for a ton of stuff. Like if you've got a little paddle tail or something and it keeps falling off the edge of the hook, you can put some Mendit on the nose of this, push it up to the front of the hook, and it will help keep your little plastics or, you know, swim baits, whatever, up on the hook for you. You could also use super glue, but this is a little softer, more rubbery. It doesn't get all hard and crusty up there. I like this better. And the thing that we've used a ton for is when you're fishing pike. Now, this is one of the crazy tackle. I haven't even fished this yet. But when you're fishing topwater for pike with the frog, one or two bites and your frog can be shredded. 
you put a few layers of this on it where that hole was and it completely seals that up makes it waterproof so you can keep fishing that frog so one pike can definitely ruin a frog with this you can make it last a ton longer okay tip number five is adding skirting material to plastics this is something if you look online all kinds of companies are doing this it's super easy to do i just took a little piece of wire and made a little tiny hook at the end of it and brought it pretty close this is one of the new Yamamoto Yamatanuki deals here. This would probably be a good candidate for it. Let's do some back here. Push this through your plastic. Buy some skirting material and cut them off into little singular pieces like this. Pull your deal back through. I pull about halfway like that so they look even on both sides. Take my scissors and cut it. And now you can add skirts to this. Hold on, let me do a couple more. There we go, add a few more to it and that's what it looks like. Gives you that skirted kind of different look to it. Will this get you more bites? I have no idea. Maybe you could do this to your stick bait, your wacky rig. There's a bunch of different baits that have this, but maybe with those finicky fish, adding just a little bit of that extra and you can go as little or as crazy as you want on here. Just gives it kind of a different little you know, look to it. Okay, the next tip, adding flash to a lure. You know, I think a lot of people think if you need something flashy, it's gotta be like a spinner bait or some specific underspin, but there's all kinds of different things you can do to add to it. Something like this. This is one of the owner flashy swimmers and underspin it's got, let me just show you. It's got a screw lock hook, so you screw your swim bait in there, put it on there, and it's got a little flash underneath it. Um, awesome way to add a little bit of flash to fish in a swim bait instead of just fishing it naked. Throw it on here and it keeps it weedless for you bank anglers. Love that because you're not getting stuck in the brush all the time. If you're fishing a crankbait, VMC has some of these. If you've never tried them, give them a go. Great on like a little lipless, on the back of a square bill. These are the bladed hybrids, so it's a treble hook with a little spinny, flashy willow blade underneath. So it just gives a little extra vibration and flash to it. Hooks are super sharp on them. Those are really nice for cranks. Now Picasso sells some of their own underspins that don't come with an underspin hook to it. It's a, a swim bait head, but then it's got this little rubber part you put up on the front of it, put your swim bait on, and it comes with an extra one. Uh, you can buy these separate. I couldn't find a how to pack of these separate, but you can buy these just the, the little under barrel underspin deal. So you could really put it on any sort of uh, swim bait head that you wanted if you had a specific one. Nice way to make your own underspin. Thanks to Chris Russ for that tip. And then a couple that are a little different. Let me pull one of these out. This is from Decoy, the trailer blade. Remember our portraying swim jig here? Well, this is what this little deal looks like. It's got just a little clip up at the front of it, and then it's got your little spinning uh, Colorado blade there. So all you have to do... Poke this in right underneath the hook. Give it just a little bit of a turn to put it horizontally to it. And that clips onto the hook just like that. So you can really put this in any position you want. That little piece clips up in there and you've got a little underspin, however you want to rig this thing. So that's kind of a cool one because you can really put that on anything you want. Or you've got these, the plus blade. This is kind of hard to rig up on camera, so I'll just show you here. You put it on the front just like you would your, uh, you know, your bobber stops. Put your line through there, pull that through it, and you've got a flashy blade at the front of it. So if you wanted to put this down more toward the head of your lure, have them focus on the flash, they're focusing more towards the head of it. So you could really add flash to a, a Texas rig or really anything else you wanted to. But I thought that was kind of neat as well. Okay, the next modification is steering a crankbait. Now you may think, oh, hold on, how is this a, a modification? Well, for crankbaits, if you have one where you cast it out and I keep my rod tip straight at me and it keeps coming in this way, rolling off to the side, it means you just need to tune it. So you need to tune this little piece, not the actual split ring. You want to actually tune and bend this little round piece that holds that split ring onto the bait. So I'm going to barely grab that with my pliers and if it's always running off to the right, I'm going to take and bend that over to the left, bend it that way, that way to the left. You want to steer it the way you want to go by bending it. So if it was going over this way, I would take this and bend it and steer it to the right. So you can tune your crankbait if they're not running straight, don't just throw them out. You can bend that little piece on the nose of it and make them run straight. Now, if you've got a, strength, a crankbait that's running completely straight and awesome, but you're fishing the sides of docks, and every time you go down the side of the dock, the right side of it is the shaded side, you're always getting bites, every single one, you can take this and bend it. So if I cast it out straight, let's say the dock's here, I cast it out straight, it's just coming in like this, right? I can steer that again, so I can take that little piece and bend it to the left and make it go under the dock and hit those dock pylons. So of course it would only work on the uh, the right side of it as I'm fishing it. If I were to get to the other side of the dock and throw it over here, it's gonna go out away from it. But a uh, tip you can do, people have done that with spinner baits, buzz baits, but for a crankbait, it does work kind of cool for that. Um, you know, if you're not good at skipping it or getting up under it, you can cast it out there and let it kind of go under the dock by itself. So 
You can either fix your crankbait or make it go off to the side, whichever you want, just by bending that little deal. Okay, the next little set of modifications you can do with a Sharpie, and the first easiest thing that's worked for me is adding color designs to stuff. Now you could do this with plastics, you could keep different colors of permanent markers, but for me, it's always a black one because I use it for a couple different things. Number one, adding black or adding texture to the bottom of a frog. I had a day where I was getting all kinds of bites on a black frog switched to a white one and wasn't getting anything. You can make all kinds of different cool, you know, little designs here. You can color the whole bottom of it black. Doesn't matter, but it gives a complete different look. It helps break up, you know, that solid white body. If they're not hitting that white, you can do that and it looks completely different. It just darkens it up for you. You can do it with plastic or crankbaits. Let's say they, uh, they tend to be biting a little crop, you notice I'm chasing it. Let that dry and you've got spots. Now it will wear off a little bit eventually after, so you have to kind of keep reapplying it. But one thing to do in a pinch if you want to add some dots or color or something to it. But the other good thing it's for is coloring your braid. Now, obviously when you use braid for a while, it's not all dark green like this. It starts to fade to a white, but you take that braid with a permanent marker like that and color it black. You can see the difference there, especially if you're in dirty stained water around a bunch of grass and stuff. Instead of that showing up real light, color that black and it kind of helps it blend in.